Hello, this is for day 110 of Bible in one year and the Bible text, 2 Samuel chapters 9 to 11 and then Luke chapter 15 verses 11 to 32. So let's begin with the prayer. Lord, we thank you for everything that you've done for us, for the salvation, for the blessings, for the gift of life, for your guidance, for the health, safety, and protection. And Lord, we pray that you would continue to do so for us in the future. And we pray that you would guide us in everything that we do. We pray for forgiveness, Lord, for our mistakes, our sins, our shortcomings. Help us, Lord, to overcome them and enlighten us as we read your word for today. Thank you, Lord. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so Second Samuel chapter 9. And David said, Is there yet any that is left of the house of Saul, that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? And there was of the house of Saul a servant whose name was Ziba. And when they had called him unto David, the king said unto him, Art thou Ziba? And he said, Thy servant is he. And the king said, Is there not yet any of the house of Saul, that I may show kindness of God unto him? And Ziba said unto the king, Jonathan had yet a son, which is lame on his feet. And the king said unto him, Where is he? And Ziba said unto the king, Behold, he is in the house of Machir, the son of Amiel, in Lodabar. Then king David sent and fetched him out of the house of Machir, the son of Amiel, from Lodabar. Now when Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, was come unto David, he fell on his face and did reverence. And David said, Mephibosheth. And he answered, Behold thy servant. And David said unto him, Fear not, for I will surely show thee kindness for Jonathan thy father's sake, and will restore thee all the land of Saul thy father, and thou shalt eat bread at my table continually. And he bowed himself and said, What is thy servant that thou shouldest look upon such a dead dog as I am? Then the king called to Siva, Saul's servant, and said unto him, I have given unto thy master's son all that pertain to Saul, and to all his house. Thou therefore and thy sons and thy servants shall till the land for him, and thou shalt bring in the fruits, that thy master's son may have food to eat. But my Pebosheth, thy master's son, shall eat bread always at my table. Now Ziva had fifteen sons and twenty servants. Then said Ziva unto the king, According to all that my lord the king had commanded his servant, so shall thy servant too. As for Mephibosheth, said the king, he shall eat at my table, as one of the king's sons. And Mephibosheth had a young son, whose name was Micah, and all that, he, all that dwelt in the house of Ziba were servants, and to Mephibosheth. So Mephibosheth dwelt in Jerusalem, for he did eat continually at the king's table, and was slain on, bo on both his feet. Second Samuel chapter 10 and it came to pass after this that the king of the children of Ammon died, and Hanan, his son, reigned in his stead. Then said David, I will show kindness unto Hanan, the son of Nahash, as his father showed kindness unto me. And David sent to comfort him by the hands of his servants for his father. And David's servants came into the land of the children of Ammon. And the princess of the children of Ammon said unto Hanan their lord, Thinkest thou that David hath honored thy father, that he hath sent comforters unto thee? Had not David rather sent his servants unto thee to search the city, and to spy it out, and to overthrow it? Wherefore Hannah took David's servants and shaved off the half, shaved off the one half of their beards, and cut off their garments in the middle, even to their buttocks, and sent them away. When they told it unto David, he sent to meet them, because the men were greatly ashamed, and the king said, Tarry at Jericho, until your beards be grown, and then return. And when the children of Ammon saw that they stank before David, the children of Ammon sent and hired the Syrians of Beth Rahob and the Syrians of Saba twenty thousand footmen, and of King Maacad a thousand men, and of Eshtob twelve thousand men. And when David heard of it, he sent Joab and all the hosts of the mighty men. And the children of Ammon came out and put the battle in array at the entering in of the gate. And the Syrians of Saba and of Rehob and Ishtob and Maakau were by themselves in the field. When Joab saw that the front of the battle was against him before and behind, he chose all of the choice he chose all of the choice men of Israel and put some in array against the Syrians. And the rest of the people he delivered into the hand of Abishai his brother, that he might put them in array against the children of Ammon. And he said, If the Syrians be too strong for me, then thou shalt help me. 
But if the children of Ammon be too strong for thee, then I will come and help thee. Be of good courage, and let us play the men for our people, and for the cities of our God, and the Lord to it that which seemeth him good. And Joab drew nigh, and the people that were with him, unto the battle against the Syrians, and they fled before him. And when the children of Ammon saw that the Syrians were fled, then fled they also before Abishai, and entered into the city. So Joab returned from the children of Ammon, and came to Jerusalem. And when the Syrians saw that they were smitten before Israel, they gathered themselves together. And Hadarius are sent, and brought out the Syrians that were beyond the river. And they came to Helam and Shaba. The captain of the host of Hadarizer went before them. And when it was told David, he gathered all Israel together, and passed over Jordan, and came to Helam. And the Syrians set themselves in array against David, and fought with him. And the Syrians fled before Israel, and David slew the men of seven hundred chariots of the Syrians, and forty thousand horsemen, and smote Shabak, the captain of their host, who died there. And when all the kings that were servants to Hadarizer saw that they were smitten before Israel, they made peace with Israel and served them. So the Syrians feared to help the children of Ammon any more. Second Samuel chapter 11 And it came to pass after the year was expired at that time, when kings go forth to battle, that David sent Joab and his servants with him, and all Israel, and they destroyed the children of Ammon, and besieged Rabbah. But David tarried still at Jerusalem, and it came to pass in an even, evening tide that David arose from off his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house, and from the roof he saw a woman washing herself. And the woman was very beautiful to look upon. And David sent and inquired after the woman, and one said, Is not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? And David sent messengers, and took her, and she came in unto him, and he lay with her. For she was purified from her uncleanness, and she returned unto her house. And the woman conceived, and sent, and told David, and said, I am a child. And David sent to Joab, saying, Send me Uriah the Hittite. And Joab sent Uriah to David. And when Uriah was come unto David, David demanded of him how Joab did, and how the people did, and how the war prospered. And David said to Uriah, go down to, go down to thy house and wash thy feet. And Uriah departed out of the king's house, and there followed him a mess of meat from the king. But Uriah slept at the door of the king's house with all the servants of his lord, and went not down to his house. And when they had told David, saying, Uriah went not down unto his house, David said unto Uriah, Camest thou not from thy journey? Why then didst thou not go down unto thine house? And Uriah said unto David, The ark and Israel and Judah abide in tents, and my lord Joab and the servants of my lord are encamped in the open fields. Shall I then go into mine house to eat and to drink, and to lie with my wife, as thou livest, and as thy soul liveth? I will not do this thing. And David said to Uriah, Tarry here today also, and tomorrow I will let thee depart. So Uriah abode in Jerusalem that day and the morrow. And when David had called him, he did eat and drink before him, and he made him drunk. And at even he went out to lie on his bed with the servants of his lord, but went not down to his house. And it came to pass in the morning that David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it by the hand of Uriah. And he wrote in the letter, saying, Set ye Uriah in the forefront of the hottest battle, and retire ye from him, that he may be smitten and die. And it came to pass, when Joab observed the city, that he assigned Uriah unto a place where he knew that valiant, that valiant men were. And the men of the city went out and fought with Joab, and there fell some of the people of the servants of David. And Uriah the Hittite died also. Then Joab sent and told David all the things concerning the war, and charged the messengers, saying, When thou hast made an end of telling the matters of the war unto the king, and if so be that the king's wrath arise, and he say unto thee, Wherefore approach ye so nigh unto the city when ye did fight? Know ye not that they would shoot from the wall? Who smote Abimelech, the son of Jerobesheth? Did not a woman cast a piece of a millstone upon him from the wall, that he died in Tevez? Why went he nigh the wall? Then say thou, thy servant Uriah the Hittite is dead also. So the messenger went and came and showed David all that Joab had sent him for. 
And the messenger said unto David, Surely the man prevailed against us, and came out unto us in the field, into the field. And we were upon them even unto the entering of the gate. And the shooters shot from off the wall upon the servants, and some of the king's servants be dead, and thy servant Uriah the Hittite is also dead, is dead also. Then David said unto the messenger, Thus shalt thou say unto Joab, Let not this thing displease thee, for the sword devoured one, as well as another, make thy battle more strong against the city, and overthrow it, and encourage thou him. And when the wife of Uriah heard that Uriah her husband was dead, she mourned for her husband. And when the morning was past, David sent and fetched her to his house, and she became his wife, and bare him a son. But that, but the thing that David has done displeased the Lord. Alright, we now go to Luke chapter 15 and read verses 11 to 32. And he said, A certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me, and he divided unto them his living. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together, and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with, the, with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen, to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hard servants of my fathers have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father, and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father, but when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him, and had compassion, and ran, and fell on his neck, and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven, and in thy sight, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe, and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand, and shoes on his feet, and bring hither the fatted calf, and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead, and is alive again, he was lost, and is found, and they began to be merry. Now his elder son was in the field, and as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants, and asked what these things meant. And he said unto him, Thy brother is come, and thy father had, killed, had killed the fatted calf, because he had received him safe and sound. And he was angry, and would not go in. Therefore came his father out, and entreated him. And he answering said to his father, Lo, this many years do I serve thee, neither transgressed I at any time thy commandment, and yet thou never gavest me a kid, that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this thy son was come, which had devoured thy living with harlots, thou hast killed for him the fatted calf. And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. It was meet that we should make merry and be glad, for this thy brother was dead, and is alive again, and was lost, and is found. Okay, so for the reflection or something to share, so essentially what you've read in Luke 15 verses 11 to 32 is the, uh, the story of the prodigal son, right? And in a way, there are a lot of people could relate to this because a lot of people could not accept that Jesus came to seek the lost, the sinners, and, you know, to bring them to repentance and show them the way back to the Lord. And people... Maybe, you know, people who were living righteously or living in visions. In a way, they probably think that it's unfair because, you know, they were being a vision. They're doing well. And yet, uh, when Jesus came, he did not seek them. He sought the sinners and he spent time with them. And he really, you know, helped them to get back on the right track and to realize the goodness of God and that they are still uh, going to remain, that they are going to remain children of God no matter what, that all they need to do is to repent of their sins and to go back to God, you know, and to be obedient and, you know, to uh, read, this, read the word of God, be obedient of the word, be faithful to the Lord, right? 
And then um, in Second Samuel chapters nine to eleven, um, in essence, we've read the story of how David uh, committed a sin uh, with Bathsheba, and you know he devised a plan to kill Uriah the Hittite so that he could have uh, the wife, you know, Bathsheba. But anyway, um, David is a great man, but he also committed a sin and. There are a lot of great people in the Bible, in the Old Testament, but every one of them also has a flaw, okay? And I think um, the message there is that no matter how great you are, you know, as a human, everyone uh, sins, right? Everyone sins, and so, but even so, God still accepts us and god remains our father we remain his children right god would not uh turn his back on us and as much as he can he would still uh tell us to come uh come to him okay to return to him okay i think those are the messages of what we've read for today all right so again that's it for day 110 a bible in one year and we've read second samuel chapters 9 to 11 and then luke 15 verses 11 to 32 thank you and god bless